Um, what's your um, philosophy around um, endpoint compression? You know, I mean, if I think about Kafka, it's more about like heavy pipe, pump it all into whatever HDFS something. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's a there's there's a there's an increased conversation about um, endpoint computing and compression, right? So smartly selecting which events are uh, passed forward. How you think about that? What's the future of Kafka yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah. So. That's right. Kafka is definitely, you know, a big distributed system. It's um, it's certainly possible to compress data, you know, client side or, mm -hmm. or machine side or whatever whatever you want to call it. I I've heard a lot of interesting ideas about pushing a lot of computate like pre computation there. Mm -hmm. I think it's unlikely. Mm -hmm. um, the reason being uh, the stuff that happens, you know, client side or device side is actually a little harder to control. Upgrade slower. Um, if all you're getting is kind of pre-aggregated data out of that, it's a little hard to know what happened. Um, right. And so, it, like, to me, the analogy from the web space would be mobile, mm -hmm. where, yeah, I mean, people definitely pay close attention to bandwidth usage and all that kind of stuff, but you still want to know what you what want. Happened. You want to have, yeah, I mean, what? what? Mm -hmm. We offering a big data analytics solution. Right, right. We love every single event, right? right? right. We rather we want to do it uh, cluster side. That's right. So, so I think we'll get very efficient right. about you know compressing data and sending it out from mm -hmm. devices. I think it's unlikely that we'll move a significant portion of the processing to that device side, so run it there, and send back only mm -hmm. results or something. And I yeah. think the reason for that is it's very hard to use the resulting data. So it's very hard to do a kind of what if mm -hmm. scenario. It's very hard to know if you sure. improved your processing in some way. Or what that time would series look like. analytics. Yeah. Okay. Also, there's different schools, uh, schools of thought out there, right? And it's kind of getting almost this classical emotional conversation about C++ versus Java, Mac versus PC, you know. So uh, that was kind of interesting. Um, Spark. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Um, you know, obviously we all know Spark doesn't have checkpoints, so they need to borrow a lot of stuff that you guys build it um, and deeply integrate it. Where, where do you guys stand with that? Are you involved in that um, in that integration or how you guys think about that? Yeah, so I mean, I guess the way Kafka and Spark meet is really for Spark streaming. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, I think Kafka's role in this kind of streaming ecosystem is to try and serve everybody who processes the streams in different ways. So applications, different layers on top. You know, hopefully query languages. I, I, I think this area of streaming data is going to end up very rich. Uh -huh. um, so for Spark, yeah, we, we, we meet with the Spark guys. We're, we're trying to get, you know, uh, security end-to-end -end and integration with Kafka, uh, trying to get them onto kind of the new uh, producer and consumer APIs, which are a little better than what they, you know, the older APIs we had. Um, and Kafka does support a kind of compacted topic for journaling state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the, that primitive is definitely use, useful for stream processing. Um, it's not used by Spark Streaming today, but probably could be um, if it fits with their model. Um, I think there's definitely interest from the Flink people. I don't think we've talked to the Spark people about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I guess I guess I, I see the role with respect to stream processing systems as, you know, first of all, it's a big, it's a big tent. <laughs> um, there's a yeah. bunch of these things. Most of them are kind of about maybe 10 or 20 percent of what you would really want in the end state out of a real-time computation layer. Mm -hmm. um, but as this whole area evolves, I think our role is to try and make, you know, make sure that we have the right primitives to support these different things. The way Kafka supports that today is by really trying to, you know, support the, the notion of journaling changes. So if you imagine this type of log, uh, we get the example of page views. Page views don't change. If you yeah. viewed a page, right. you viewed a page, it's written here. Um, one of the things we thought pretty closely about um, a while back was what does it mean when you're journaling updates? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, if you, if you journal the state of your user table, your users update their accounts over time. Um, and so what you have here is, is no longer these kind of immutable events, but rather, you know, hey, my user record is currently this. My mm -hmm. user record is currently this. And that's exactly what you need to be able to do any kind of stateful computation. So aggregates, joins, anything that has you know scope beyond a single message, and that's obviously most of the interesting stuff in stream processing. Mm. Um, and so we we built that into Kafka intentionally with the idea of, of supporting that, and it's there for anybody who you know wants to use it. 